at this vulture perch over the river. A tiny oak has begun in the humus. Already, its small roots search into the cracks of the limestone bluff. I'm leaning against an old oak beside a high meadow, still stalking the fawn of my desire so that I might touch her fading spots. Walking after breakfast. Sometimes, between a cardinal's first whistle and the bee's morning hum, a man hears the answer to a question he forgot to ask. The wet trunks of the cedar trees cross before me like a bird's giant footprint. Those lines are the map I saw in the old branch library. Where as a boy, I read about herons and swans and great geese going north. Whistling and humming at the same time creates a third thing between my teeth. I become a cricket, singing of spruce trees and nearby flies. I taste both a cigar and coffee. And the question is, how do I get on with my life? What makes the stars so beautiful? Is it their brilliant godlike fires? Constellations glow at noon, yet they can't be seen from here. In a cave, darkness is darkness. Yet when the stars appear in the darkness, people see archers, dragons, or souls who ride wild horses down the Milky Way. got a little farm. We've raised a few cattle, a few steers. And this is a poem for my wife. Happy birthday, Corinne. My wife loading her cattle. Before 5 a.m. in late November, She stepped into the mouth of a trailer and sweetly called to her cattle. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Look what I have for you. Sniffing the metal and blackness before them, the twin steers backed away from her beckon. I squeezed the stall gate against the smaller one's ribs till he leaped toward her voice and went in. Good boy, good boy. The 
second steer turned and kicked on the pivot, his brown bulk confused by her words. He resisted the driver's twist of his tail, but finally had to jump into the darkness. It's okay, baby. It's okay, baby. And his mother offered him corn. The floor trembled. The trailer door slammed. Something rumbled in the muscles and meat. My wife wept as her cattle boys left to the Watkins locker in Plum City. She said nothing more. Neither did I. And we both drove off to work. Could we hear that one from once more without the music this time? Just to hear your voice. Before 5 a.m. in late November, she stepped into the mouth of the trailer and sweetly called to her cattle. Come on, boys. Come on, boys, look what I have for you. Sniffing the metal and blackness before them, twin steers backed away from her beckon. I squeezed the stall gate against the smaller one's ribs till he leaped toward her voice and went in. Good boy, good boy. The second steer turned and kicked on a pivot, his brown bulk confused by her words. He resisted the driver's twist of his tail, but finally had to jump into the darkness. It's okay, baby. It's okay. And his mother offered him corn. The floor trembled. The trailer door slammed. Something rumbled in the muscles and meat. My wife wept as her cattle boys left to the Watkins locker in Plum City. She said, nothing more. Neither did I. We both drove off to work. This is the blizzard. At home, we sit out the blizzard and wait two days until the roads clear. Between the chores, we speak of the neighbor's infidelities, incomplete affections, and how humans cannot humanly fill all the needs of another. We hold hands and scour one another's expectations. What else can we do? except carry silences behind hard lips with lines like snow fences and let our wants accumulate on top of one another the way drifts always pile on the other side of the fence. Tonight, the moon shines over wind-washed fields. Tufts of unmown hay lift through the rippling whiteness, like the body hairs we fondle after our boy goes to sleep, like the holy exaggerations we remember when we pray. You got a phone for Chess? You got that phone for Chess? I got it. I'm Not naked on the bed. Your beauty. Nude, not naked on the bed. 
is far more a gift than I ever expected. I watch languor recline in your wise gray eyes while slate hummingbirds carved as earrings dangle from the golden hooks. I quiver in your breath and the ceiling fan halts in that instant. We look at one another, open and close. An intimate wind, the cause of auroras, moves north, south, east, and west. Then we swim into one another. I wanted my son to know a hillside's green lap, a darting goshawk, the way pheasants bark, and how your life grows wider than your dreams. My wife wanted to tend again a vegetable bed, milk alpine goats, gather brown eggs, then raise and ride her many spirited horses. Secretly, I wanted to live as my grandfather did before he left the prairie to marry a city girl in St. Paul, where he lost so many good jobs. Eventually, because he rolled his own cigarettes, because he drank port and muscatel, because he had blood clots and gangrene, his riding legs were cut off. From our farm now, I hear unfed cattle bellow in our neighbor's stock pen. And I see the thunderstorms approaching for the from the west long before I want to see them. Jesse's little story yesterday. Spring blooms warm on a Saturday. My 12-year-old is learning the legal manner of shooting. Prone position, 22 rifle. Ping, ping, ping. A perfect shot with a perfect understanding of the laws. He'll get his state certificate to hunt. Autumn dries the soul and the woods and the leaves which fall in their own time. They drop away and the wind heaps them against a fallen softened log. Its oak rot stinks with sour, babyish wetness. A gray squirrel scatters, chatters, then halts. Spreading upward on the grand river of bark. Its tail is as still as the grain in the wood. He shoots. The squirrel falls, twitching, 
until he wrings its neck as his father showed him. While skinning the animal, he prefers the fur to the pinkish carcass. Doesn't like the wild smell, but he learns. Touches the pearly gray guts, the knee socket shaped like a flower, and the deep red stains beneath the ribs. this one last year and I got up here and I totally forgot about it. Uh, the thread of sunlight. <coughs> Where the thread of sunlight crossed the top bunk, I touched the rough cut rafter, watched two spiders approach on the lumber's vertical plane. Just when my heart condensed to arachnid size, the great wounds of war opened before me. One spider limped on with the other's head in its mouth. When I asked my mother about war, she told me, you're thinking too much. And before her sentence ended, my father rushed in, chattering about the chores we'd accomplish. The magneto for the mill saw needed repair. The window trim should be painted. The outboard motors could be tuned. And if the work gets done, we might go fishing in the evening. The sunlight reflected off the flat lake, and I stood between my mother and my father, thinking. <laughs> anything to do with my name, you're probably right. Beavers who were too young built a lodge in the wrong place. In the deep trees, under the forest spread, and much too near the highway. The two of them cut the saplings properly wove a dome in high water. And inside the dome, three tunnels curled up to the high dens where they matted the grass for their comfort. Then the flood receded. They built again. Further out, among cattails in deeper water, they built again, branch by branch, a new lodge and home.
the way to live. Come, come, be like a bell whose beauty is awakened by a fierce blow. <laughs>